Hey, uh, how's everyone doing? Uh, this is a second video of the day because uh, I actually started this channel, believe it or not, for a uh, school project, but I wanted to start a sports channel in general. Uh, so the videos aren't supposed to be that long, each one. Um, but there's a lot going on in the sports world, obviously, uh, at the current moment. Uh, so I didn't want to just touch on what the things are we touched on before. Um, well, in baseball, we obviously have the awards coming up. And, uh... And, uh, congratulations to all Astros fans, and, uh, on your first ever World Series, which was well-deserved, you guys tore it down and built it back up. And how many people, local people were saying, uh, analytics does work. As much as people, some people hate it because, uh, they feel like it objectifies the players, it doesn't. I mean, baseball is a business, NFL, hockey, uh, uh, any sport, NBA, is all business-based, and players aren't objects, players are players, and uh, no team just looks at stuff from just analytics either. They still look at it from what the players represent, what the players want, and et cetera, et cetera. Um... But now with the new analytical world, we look at it from both sides. We look at the numbers, then we look at the human value. Um, that's why certain guys don't get paid as much or don't get respected as much by the team because of how they act, either on the field or off the field or both. Um... One of the reasons Cam Newton's not as well-respected around the league as he could be due to his athletic ability and talent-wise uh, is because of the way he represents himself. A lot of stuff is about perception. And if you perceive that he's irresponsible and does stuff that is not what you want your kids to do or anything... Uh, then that goes miles. Um, but uh, the, another example would be Odubel Herrera on the Phillies. He's a good outfielder, honestly, a very good outfielder that has good numbers. But you see, he he dogs it sometimes and doesn't put in the 100% effort. Uh, that's why the Phillies would do a lot of due process. Uh, Gabe Kapler uh, also is a, a pretty good, hard uh, working, uh, lets you know when he disapproves, and he did so great a job as player development with, uh, the Dodgers, who obviously lost in the World Series, but congratulations to the Dodgers and their fan base for this great season, who they run a lot of analytics too, and, uh, basically though, for the Astros' perspective, they believed, they believed uh, their owner believed, and down the organization, they believed they would be a great team in a few years. Uh, well, they are, and now it's paying off, which is exactly what's going to happen for many other teams, like our own Phillies, our own Sixers, which is currently starting to happen a bit now, our own Flyers, who were rebuilding but uh, stayed competitive during the time. Uh, which is a testament to Ron Hextall and how he was able to balance both ends, which in my opinion is a little bit simpler in hockey than it is in some other sports, but he's still a great GM. We don't have a bad GM right now in Philadelphia. Um, but a uh, testament to how great uh, those teams use numbers and players and uh, the humane side of players to become a great team. The Astros were known, as, and the Dodgers, as being a very family-based team. They did a lot together. They uh, really um, exemplified brother, like brotherly bonding. Uh, and that's why 
not just the skill they have on their team, but that goes a mile too in getting to what you would call the promised land of that sport being the World Series. Um, so congratulations to both of those teams and mega congratulations to the Astros for winning your first ever World Series, which will be the first of many with how great that franchise is going to be for years to come. They will be the next Cardinals, who were for many years always successful no matter what happened. They always figured out a way, which is kind of how the Phillies were for that period of time. But then we let our farm system get away from us, which we're now building back up. Uh, but um, moving on in the MLB from the World Series, which was one of the best we've ever seen the past two years, two straight Game 7s, that's not heard of really in baseball. Uh, two great World Series in a row between two pretty evenly matched teams. Uh, we see bullpen coming into play a lot more, uh, and I think that's going to continue to do that. Uh, people are going to find ways to win when they can and base numbers off of, for example, the third time through the order, almost most starting pitchers besides like the elite class, obviously, do not do as well through the third time through the order. So that's why a lot of those pitcher or uh, managers use those other guys. But obviously throughout a whole season, uh, you have to have great bullpen throughout because you're not going to use starters in the bullpen throughout the season like the Astros and Dodgers have both done throughout the playoffs among other teams. Uh, the Giants have done it, but you don't do that in the regular season. You don't use Madison Bumgarner in the sixth inning of a game that Johnny Cueto started. It's just not a thing. But um, moving on to the MLB awards, him what's coming up, the uh, 2017 MVP finalists for the NL are Joey Votto, Stanton, and Goldschmidt. Of course, people go, well, why are they the MVP finals? Because none of those teams got anywhere. Well, because MVP realistically shouldn't be looked at as did you carry your team to the playoff. Because the Reds had flaws, the Marlins had flaws, uh, pitching was one of them. Uh, and the Diamondbacks have flaws, which also was in part pitching. Um, and what, what you basically count is war, which is wins above replacement, how much that player meant to their winning percentage and, and stuff like that. Um, you, you count if you took that guy out of the lineup and he was injured or out most of the season, how good would that team be? Well, Stan had over 50 home runs. The Marlins have good players on the team like Marcelo Ozuna, Christian Yelich, Hedge of Aria, who's an underrated shortstop, etc. But let's be honest. Without Giancarlo Stan in that lineup, they don't win most of those games that they were able to win. And their record would be significantly less than it was uh, already, which was an okay team, actually who will just continue to get better. Uh, well, with the new wave, Stanton will probably get traded, and whoever he gets traded to, good for him, because he's going to get traded to a good team. He has control, uh, and he might get traded to... Uh, my prediction is he'll get traded to the Giants if he wants to go there, because that's a uh, good fit for him. They struggled last year, but we know the Giants typically never struggle continuously years, and Baumgartner was out after his accident, and that goes a long way, having your stud pitcher being out. But I think he'll go to the Giants. Uh, whether he goes with somebody else on his team, uh, who knows. Um, but in terms of the MVP... I think Stan will get it because uh, of the reason of being, in today's day and age, we love the home run ball. We love how much people hit home runs and stuff like that. And he was a menace. And not to mention, he had a good, really good batting average this year, which was, I believe, in the 280s. And he doesn't always have that. Now, Joey Votto and Paul Goldschmidt have both put up great numbers, too. Joey Votto's always a guy that's great with war and, may, and uh, fielding and stuff like that. And... Um, 
he pro it wouldn't surprise me if he gets traded sometime in the near future with how the Reds are retooling that organization and etc. Uh, Goldie Paul Goldschmidt uh, had a great season too in Arizona, but uh, I think. Stanton has it because of the amount of home runs he gave, because of the amount of, uh, just by uh, eye, how great he did and how impressive of a player he is. They're all really impressive players, and whoever wins that, congratulations to them. Uh, but my prediction is Giancarlo. Uh, for the AL, we have Aaron Judge, Jose Altuve, and uh, Jose Ramirez making his first appearance on the ballot, which kicked Mike Trout out of the ballot, of all people. Um... If I had to guess for that one, uh, I would guess Jose Altuve. And even though Judge uh, hit a lot of home runs, I got to make the argument that's why Stan might win, which is not the only argument. Judge's batting average was good, but he had that great run, then struggled and made the adjustment, which I give him a ton of credit for, uh, being able to put in all the work and being able to put in the tough time to make his big adjustments to go back to being a wrecking machine that he is. Uh, but uh, MVPs don't go dormant for an entire month. It's just not something you do. Uh, so I think he has an MVP in his future for sure. He has the rookie of the year in the bag. Uh, but uh, in terms of this year, you got to give that to Jose Altuve. I mean, that kid who is yeah, that he just rakes. He's a great hitter, a great defender, a uh, great teammate, and he's just unbelievable. Uh, he always has a good OPS, uh, really good slugger for his size. Uh, consistently hits near twenty home runs or above him. Uh, he's just a great o <coughs> overall player and a five tool player. Cy Young, well, first of all, got the t double nationals in the Cy Young, Scherzer and Strauss, uh, and then Clayton Kershaw, who missed some time. Uh, Clayton Kershaw probably typically win, but he did miss that time, which I think is what's going to hurt him this year, and I think they'll give it to Scherzer again, because Scherzer's had a really good year, and he if you took him out of that rotation – the Nationals would have probably lost 10 more games because of how dominant he was in, day in and day out every time he pitched. Strausberg obviously was the same one, but, he, but, 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 but from eye and watching, Strauss still has games. Uh, even he admitted it, that he, has to, he still has a lot of work to do, and he learns a lot from Max. Uh, but I, I think that Scherzer, uh, rookie of the year in the NL is Cody Bellinger. I mean, it's between Bellinger, Josh Bell, and Paul DeYoung. Uh, it's Cody Bellinger. I mean, that dude just destroyed. He came up and hit a multitude of home runs. And uh, it's ridiculous in the rate he hit home runs and just destroyed them. Um AL, you have Trey Mancini, Ben and Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge is a lock. There's not even a reason to debate that one. Uh, and on manager here, you have Bob Black from Colorado, Tori Lovello from the D-backs, and Dave Roberts from the Dodgers. The obvious choice would be Dave Roberts because he carried his team to the World Series. Uh... And he is a really good manager. The players always rave about how great he is to the in the uh, to the players and uh, just how smart of a baseball mind he is, but how good of a person he is one on one to talk to about anything. Um, but uh, what I think hurts him a bit is we all knew the Dodgers were going to be one of the best teams in baseball. Like they're just a great organization, got a lot of money, spend their money wisely, got a good farm system. Cody Bellinger is a key example of that. And just pick up very good players, like Chris Taylor, for example. They picked up a guy, they took a chance on Chris Taylor, who then put in the work to adjust his swing, because his swing was a little bit more of an uppercut and not straightforward when he played in Seattle. Then he changed it and made it more straight-lined, and he started to rake this year. He's one of my favorite players in the game, honestly. And uh, I tweeted about him a bit. Um... 
as he was uh, in the during the World Series, and he just raked uh, the whole postseason. Uh, but his uh, war, I believe, was fourth in the entire postseason. Uh, I think Justin Turner's was actually first. Um, who's another great player. Uh, but uh, he, what's going to hurt the um, Roberts is, I think he was on a team that we expected to be fantastic, and they uh, lived up to our expectations. And unfortunately for Dodgers fans, weren't able to bring home the crown, but there have many more chances. Um, but I have to give that to... Bud Black, because the Do- or not the Dodgers, excuse me, the Rockies had many, uh, like issues that they had to get past. Tyler Chat was a pretty solid MLB pitcher, but he couldn't pitch well in Coors because Coors is a park where they just uh, not a pitcher's park at all. They had a lot of injuries in their rotation this year. Uh, that he was able to battle through. And Chad Batiste was out, uh, and God bless him, with cancer stream of the season, came back, did fairly well. Uh, God bless him, and uh, look forward to being able to watch him now for many more years as one of the better, uh, one of the good uh, up-and-coming guys in the game. Um, but I give it to him because of we didn't expect the Rockies to be as good as they were. They battled the whole season through injuries, through adversity, and uh, had a very good overall season. Kudos to Bob Black and the Colorado Rockies. Uh, AL is between Terry Francona, uh, Mon- Molitor of the Twins, and A.J. Hinch of the Astros. Well, the Astros won the World Series. Uh, so, again, A.J. Hinch will be the obvious answer. And A.J. Hinch, again, is a great manager at knowing game management and when to pull somebody, when to keep them in, etc. Um, I think he has a good chance to win uh, because even though we all expected the Astros to be really, really good this year and Sports Illustrated predicted them to win the World Series uh, three years ago uh, in 2014's cover, um... I didn't know how well they would all come together because they still got young guys on their team. Uh, so I thought maybe they were another year still to win the World Series, and he really pulled that team together. And even before they got Justin Merlin, they were able to battle through injuries of Keiko among others, and really just put together a great season. So I think he might get that one. My uh, underdog one for that reward would be Paul Molitor because look at, I mean, the Twins went from like losing his 100 games to winning near that. Uh, that's incredible. So I think he gets high consideration. Um, and it wouldn't shock me at all if he wins. Um and then, as a last point in this video, I want to offer my condolences to everybody of the baseball world, the sports world, and uh, um, to, about Roy Holiday, uh, who died in a plane crash. Uh, he's a fantastic pitcher, but even a better gentleman. Chase Sutley had the story of when he came to the stadium at 5.30 in the morning for the world, or for the uh, spring training. He was already there, done his workout. And then he would go shower, clean up everything. Then put his uniform on and do his workout with the team. I mean, the dude was a workhorse. Uh, and he was a leader by example. And he was a true perfectionist and a true unbelievable gentleman. Uh, God bless uh, Roy Holiday and uh, everybody that uh, was a part of him for the, all those years. Uh, and uh, it's just a sad and somber moment in uh, all of sports world and just the world in general because he touched a lot of different people. Uh, he was such a good advocate, a humanitarian. Uh, it's not much Doc didn't... Uh, stride to do and be great at uh 
he wanted to be as good a pilot as he was a baseball player. It's just Doc it was Doc's personality. Um, but um, today for the final take story, uh, I think most of you probably heard of Lee Angelo Ball got arrested in China for choplifting among a couple other UCLA freshmen. Um, if I was in the U.S., that wouldn't be that big of a deal, uh, at all. Um, but in China, the laws are different, and you can get three to ten years for shoplifting. Uh, I, I wish him the best, and, uh, they can solve this issue without it being a huge legal action, because typically in the United States, that shoplifting is just a slap on the wrist, but that's not the case in China. So, uh... This is a bigger issue than I think LeVar is making it because of how the legal system works over there. But um, I hope they solve it peacefully and quickly uh, because China has been known to be slow with uh, their crime, uh, how long they take to solve crime. Sometimes hold you in the country for weeks before they tell you what the verdict is. But um, I r wish them the best and everybody makes mistakes, of course, at that age. Uh, be it a stupid mistake, obviously, everybody makes them, and we gotta look past them, move on, and learn from more mistakes, uh, but remember, uh, hopefully when he comes back from this, whatever happens, whatever the outcome is, it makes him a better person, uh, and a more responsible person, which is what mistakes typically make all of us, um, but well wishes with him. Uh, tonight, his bro, Lonzo, uh, has a uh, good game. And he commented on the situation. He hasn't talked to them yet. He wants to see how it plays out. But um, they got a big game against the Celtics, which is Lonzo Ball versus Kyrie. And uh, Kyrie is literally putting the Celtics team on his back right now with uh, the injury of Gordon Hayward. Um, that should be a good matchup. I think Lonzo has to start being more aggressive. Uh, he's too passive right now, not in terms of passing the ball too much. I mean in terms of attacking the rim. He's not doing that enough. So I think Alonzo Ball will still be a good player. They don't need to worry in L.A. He still has decent stats right now, but his shooting percentage is not good at all. Uh, his three-point percentage, which is something we obviously all raved about him for in college, is not too great this year either. But uh, to give him time, uh, give him time to get the aggressiveness work into him that um, – Walden's trying to do, and I think he will still be worthy of the pick he got chosen at, but I think he's one of those guys that just takes a little bit longer than a Ben Simmons, a Joe Embiid, a uh, Booker, or etc. Uh, give him a little bit of time, and he will be fine. Uh, have a good day, everybody. Uh, that game is on ESPN at 8 o'clock. Uh, then there's the Wednesday Night Rivalry for Hockey for all those NHL fans. Uh, I probably will watch both, watch one on my computer, watch one on the TV, but, uh, have a good day, everyone. Uh, peace.